outside of the ring, George is taking on a management role. Mm-hmm. Um, your two guys here. Yeah. Um, how pleased have you been with, with how that's gone so far? I'm very pleased because um, you know you can try to do it all yourself, or you can. Uh, George brings things to the table that I can't. George can open doors that I can't. George can, um, you know, get them attention and make moves for them to that'll move their career forward that I wouldn't be able to do. And then I bring to the table the development of them for better or for worse. And, uh, and they bring together their efforts. So as a team, we're doing, I'm doing good. I'm completely pleased with both of them in every manner of being a professional. Not only have they won every round in their two fights and three fights, um, Lucas, two knockouts. One of them against a guy you're not supposed to knock out. The other guy against an undefeated guy, the same as Duke when he fought him. And Garvey has uh, has boxed 12 rounds and won every one of them. They both boxed away from home. And they both conducted themselves the, thing, the way I think they should. Even when it comes down to ticket sales and you know the business side of it. They both accepted what has to be done and stepped up. So I couldn't be happier. Going back to Luke's debut, um, not an easy venue away from home, Wembley mm. Arena. How pleased were, were you with him? Very pleased because with both of them, we had a chat and we said, okay, the first fight, you want to be in a fight that you know, you're know you supposed to win because it's not about are you able to beat the man in front of you, it's are you able to keep your composure and perform the way you should because now you're a pro and you know it's your first time doing it. So there's a lot going to be asked here. So we picked six rounds instead of four because you make a mistake in one round and a four round and then you're, you're trying to crawl back a draw. Um, we also wanted to show that these guys have been training like pros right throughout their amateur career and six rounds isn't a big deal. The other thing was to get guys that don't normally get stopped. Then the, the the pressure that you feel into trying to stop the guy to look great in your pro debut is off you. So in both of them, we pick guys that don't get stopped. Duke happened to stop his guy. Um, the referee stopped it. I think the referee could have let it go on a little bit more, but we still had, I think, two rounds left. So Duke was going to get to him anyway because he had been hurting him continuously in that last round. And, and he stopped him not trying to stop. That's what was impressive. He just boxed let his hands go, change the tempo, change the, the um, emphasis on hard shots and light combinations, create opens. He just performed fantastically on a big stage. So I couldn't be more pleased with that. And the same with, with Garvey on, on his pro debut, same thing. He won every round and looked good against a guy that, yes, you're supposed to be, but guys don't always look good against him because they try too hard. Garvey stuck to a script and just brought it off beautifully. So I'm very, very pleased. And Luke's second fight, it didn't get any easier. Dragged off to Germany. <clears throat> well, that's a great show there. I wanted to get this little, all the myths, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. So by the time that they get into, you know, fighting guys for minor titles or for positioning in the rankings for a British title, that most of these myths are gone out of the way. So boxing away from home for both of them, that's done. Carvey's done it on a pay per view show in Denmark. Uh, Duke's done it on a world title bill in Germany. Um, they've both fought guys who, you know, Garvey in his second fight, a guy of 14 and 7. This guy in his fight previous to that fought an English dude, light middleweight, 15 and 0. But Garvey in his second fight fought him 14 and 7, and a weight division above what he should be, at light middle instead of welter. These are good experiences that you can realize the record don't make him. Watch the fighter. Do you beat that fighter? And don't worry about what his record says. You know, you're fighting away from home. You're still doing it in a ring. Same ring that you have in the gym. So those myths have gone for those guys. They're able to fight guys with good records, beat them, and away from home, and win, and look good, and realize that they're capable of doing it, and not hope that they can do it when they have to. Now they know they can do it when they have to. So yeah, what's next for Luke and Garvey? Luke and Garvey, high chance that they will be out here in Swindon on a bill that we've called uh, the World of Weights. That'll have Eamon O'Kane, who's ranked number eight by the ABF, 
as the main event. Duke will be chief support. Calvi will be on the undercard. Uh, that's not done yet. If we can tie up a few loose ends within the next couple of days, then that show will go ahead. Um, if that show doesn't go ahead, then Garvey will be out up in East London in February, and Duke will be out in Germany. Talking about Lawrence Bennett and, and Luke, mm. um, just before Christmas, you put some money on the table to try and mm. make the fight happen. Mm. Anything since? No, nothing since. They, um, you know, I'm not going to second guess why they don't want to fight. They just don't want to fight, and that's fine. Um, I, I have turned down fights for Duke. I got offered a, a, a fight against a dude, and I said, no, there's no point yet. That's a good fight, so let's do it for a good reason. But I already think that Lawrence and Duke is for a good reason, because in my opinion, I don't care how good you are, if nobody knows you exist, you ain't going to make money. And if you want to move forward in this game, instead of everyone running to the smoke and going up to Liverpool or London to get signed, you still got to sell tickets. So you've either got to get people in your new town that you've moved to behind you buying tickets, or get people where you already live wanting to travel. Well, I would prefer these guys make their whole world Swindon. And even though the fact that we go to London and that to fight, we go over to different places and fight, their main attention needs to be in Swindon, doing what they do, being in fights against guys with records that they want to come watch and building up their resume here at home. And when you have two guys in the same division, they could fill up the Oasis with 1,500 people for that fight. That's the reason we want the fight at this moment. Three months' time, we won't want that fight because, of course, if everything goes to plan, everything I'm talking to you about is if the plans go the way they should. And, of course, we know in boxing and life they can change. But if everything goes to plan and every one of us are working 100% at it, so we're giving it a 100% opportunity to be able to go to plan, we won't be interested in that fight in three months because Luke will have had four more fights, five more fights in the space of three months. Why do we want to then wait around to fight him then? He's not having his next fight till March. He hasn't, that'll be six months since he won the Southern area. You don't, pay in this, you don't get paid in this game unless you're fighting. You don't get paid for being a champion. You could be a five-time world champion. You only get paid when you're fighting. So I want these guys to be in fights that the Swindon public want to get behind, that they believe are real fights. And that's why I made the offer I did. Lawrence said he could knock him out. I don't deny Lawrence's belief that he can beat Duke. I expect him to believe that. I expect everyone that they get in the ring with to believe they can beat the other corner. That's what you're supposed to do, is the fight game. But I don't see how a man believes that he can knock him out when he's never dropped somebody or stopped. Why all of a sudden then would you think that you could stop a dude who hasn't lost? That don't make sense to me. If he had lost three on the trot and got stopped on every one, then for him to say, I'm going to stop you too, that makes sense. But for a dude who's never stopped somebody, to talk about stopping a dude who's never lost, that don't even make nonsense. So, so there's a real danger now that fight won't ever happen. Um, probably won't happen. In the near future. To be honest with you, we don't care if it happens or not. We're putting out the offers there because we would like it to happen and we would like interest in the Swindon public behind our fighters. Well, if the Swindon public know that we want to have fights that they're interested in and we make public offers to get those fights in place, I have no disrespect for the other side that don't want it. They want to move their career forward in the way that they want to do their business. I fully respect that, so long as other people then can respect that we're going to move forward how we want to do business. And all we want is the attention for the fighters. Then we want the fighters to perform in order to keep that defend, that attention, to move forward. So, so far the guys are doing everything that's asked them while they're in the ring. It's my job to coach them, to prepare them, but it's also my job as a co-manager to move them forward and get them attention. So, I let the Swindon public know we want to be in fights. We're putting the effort out there to be in these fights. You know, Garvey against Ryan Martin, a year, 18 months from now, that's going to be a great fight. That doesn't mean there has to be no bad blood between them. Ryan's a top gentleman, so is Garv. It's still a fight that's going to make sense in 18 months. So people can start talking about it now. These things need to build. 
but the fight with Lawrence wasn't to build anything. It was to talk about it, get it done, fight, get attention, move on. It's not working, it's fine.